Now that we have the photos in place on our digital template, we can begin adding other elements to our digital scrapbook page. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this tutorial. I need to add patterned paper to the remaining light yellow squares as well as to the background of my page. For the squares, I've chosen a light colored paper that I have opened in the project bin down here. I'll double click on it and you can see it. I'm going to move it onto our template in the same way that we moved our photos in the previous tutorial by using the move tool, clicking on the paper, and dragging it over the thumbnail of the template that we are using. And you will see it opens in our project. The layer with the paper on it will appear in the layers palette just above whichever layer I last had selected. In this case, the paper appears at the very top of my layers palette, so on my project, all of the other elements of the template are essentially hidden underneath this 12 by 12 sheet of paper. To fill those two squares on my template with the paper, I need to follow the same basic process discussed in the last video of moving the layer until it is just above the layer with the light yellow square, and then clipping the paper to that shape, either by hovering my mouse over the line between those two layers and holding down the Alt key and then clicking, or I'm going to undo that by hitting Control Z. You can also undo in the edit menu up here. Another way to accomplish this clipping task is simply to, once your layer is above the layer you want it to be clipped to, simply hitting Control G and that will do the same thing. Now to fill the other yellow layer, I will need to duplicate the layer um, of pattern paper. To do that, in the layer with the pattern paper, I will right click and choose duplicate layer. I have an option to name it if I want to. And you can see it creates a second layer identical to the first pattern paper layer. And I'll just duplicate the process. I'll move that layer until it is just above the layer with the other yellow square and then I will clip those two together. Now the background paper that I want to use was originally more of a peachy shade of pink and I really wanted it to be closer to the color of my daughter's pajamas in the photo. So to accomplish this I can actually adjust the hues of the paper. Again there are a couple of ways to access the hue adjustment screen. You can find it under the layer menu at the top, choosing new adjustment layer, and then hue and saturation. And if I were adjusting this element after it was already in a project with other elements, I would want to make sure to click this group with previous layer option because that would make sure to limit any adjustments that I make only to the paper and not to any of the other elements on the project. From here I can adjust the colors. I want to show you the other way to get to this same screen and that is by clicking on this black and white circle icon in the layers palette and then choosing hue and saturation. It's the same screen. You would have to clip this adjustment layer to that element in the same way that you clip the photo to a shape um, in order to ensure that it doesn't change any of the other elements if you were changing this paper when it was already on a project with other elements. So from here I'm going to adjust the colors of my paper by changing the by moving the sliders here. I can make it just about any color I want to. I want it to be sort of bit sort of more of a pink maybe there and then I can adjust the saturation I can make it lighter in saturation or brighter in saturation I think we'll do a little bit brighter say maybe there and then we're gonna lighten it up some to about there I think I think that's a pretty good match to the color of my daughter's pajamas there. So over here in the layers palette I'm going to right click and it doesn't matter which one of these layers I right click into and hit merge visible. This is going to simplify the process of moving this paper with the move tool over to our template. 
but when I close this layer it gives me the option to save it and I'm not going to choose to save it that will revert it back to its original color um, that peachy shade now I'm going to move this background paper the layer all the way to the bottom until it's just above the layer that says background cardstock I could clip this layer to the background cardstock layer or delete the background cardstock layer but it isn't the orange background cardstock layer is not visible so it really doesn't matter this paper is 12 by 12 and as long as it hides what's behind it it doesn't matter how I go about that so in the next tutorial we will continue the process of building our page